Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to I Can Solve Multiplication and Division Equations. We've already done addition and subtraction, and now this should follow a lot of the same rules. Follow along, pause when you need to, and take notes. Do not chase me to write things down. Make sure you're listening to the content. So, multiplication and division are inverse operations. Okay, just like we learned about addition and subtraction being inverse operations, that means that they undo each other. If I add something on, to take it away, I subtract it off. So the multiplication property of equality just says that whatever you multiply to one side, if you multiply that to the other side, they will remain equal. Division property says the same thing. Whatever you divide, if you divide each side by a non-zero number, you cannot divide by zero. If you divide, then they'll remain equal as well. If I divide by 4 here and 4 here, I'll remain equal. They are each other's inverse. They undo. So to solve a multiplication equation, y was asked to solve 150 times h is equal to 675. I want to find out what h is before I've multiplied by 150. So I'm going to start. Well, I'm going to start by rewriting my problem first. So 150 times h is equal to 675. I'll have my train tracks there. Since this is multiplication, I do the inverse, which is division, to undo that. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other property of equality. 150 divided by 150 is 1, so I end up with 1h. 675 divided by 150 is 4 and a half. So since I got h alone, I don't need that one where I can that one there. I can just write it as h equals four and a half. You should always check your solution, and that means to plug it back in and make sure that they equal each other. So I know that four times one hundred is four hundred. Four times fifty is two hundred, so I'm at six hundred. Half of one hundred and fifty is seventy five. So I'm at 675 equals 675. That means this is true. So try to do these and check your solutions. So I'm going to start with my train tracks. I like to say, what is happening to x to get to 72? It's being multiplied by 8. So I undo multiplication with division. So I divide by 8 because the goal is to get the variable alone. And 8 divided by 8 is 1, so I get 1x divided by 8. 72 divided by 8 is 9. I don't need that 1 there, so I can really just write this as x equals 9. We can check. 8 times 9 should be 72, and it is, so my solution works. Check again. Remember to pause and try them on your own when you can. So n is being multiplied by negative 4, so I divide by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. I'm left with 1n. 28 divided by negative 4. Now I have a positive divided by a negative, which I know is a negative, and I get a negative 7. Check my answer. Negative 4 times negative 7 should be 28. Negative times a negative is a positive, and it is 28. Last one I'm multiplying to try. Notice K is on the other side. Okay, same rules apply. You are having K being multiplied by negative 6, so we're going to undo that by dividing by negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 is a positive 2. A negative over a negative is a positive. I'm going to rewrite this variable first and I'm going to double check. Negative 12 is negative 6 times 2. Well, a negative and a positive is a negative. So it works. All right, so a division equation is going to work the same way. You're going to do the inverse operation to solve. And now we know the inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite this. A over negative 3. Remember that fraction bar is division is equal to 7. I'm going to make my tracks. 
you can assume there's a 1 there, and so it's really multiplying by the reciprocal, undoing division. division. So I'm going to multiply by negative 3, because negative 3 over negative 3 is 1. I'm left with just A. I do the same thing on the other side. Positive times a negative is a negative. 7 times 3 is 21, so I have a negative 21 as an answer. Check my solution. Negative 21 over negative 3 is 7. A negative over a negative is a positive. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so it's true. Give these a try. I like to rewrite them so I can see what I'm doing. Undo dividing by negative 4 would be to multiply by negative 4. Goes to 1. Multiply by negative 4 here. This is where our integer rules are really important. We need to know multiplying and dividing integers. Negative and negative is a positive. 8 times 4 is 32. Double check. 32 divided by negative 4 should be negative 8. Positive divided by negative is a negative, and it works. Make your tracks. Undoing dividing by 5 would be multiplying by 5, because 5 over 5 is the same as 1, and that's what we want. We want 1 of the variables. Do the same thing on the other side. A negative times a positive is a negative 45. Check, of course, negative 45 over 5 should be a negative 9. Negative over positive is a negative. 5 goes into 45 9 times. Solution works. Make my tracks. Undoing dividing by negative 2. Multiply by negative 2. Because if I did this on top, I'd get negative 2b over negative 2. Cancel. I'm just left with B. Same thing over here. Negative times positive is a negative. Negative times positive is a negative. 2 times 30 is 60. A lot of us might do 15 here. If we did that, we would end up with the wrong answer. And I'll show you if we got the wrong answer how our solution wouldn't work. So I rewrite this variable first. And I'm going to check. 30 is negative 60 over negative 2. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Had you divided here instead and got negative 15, what happens when I plug that in? Well, you notice I get 30 on one side and a positive 7.5 on the other side. Those aren't equal, meaning that can't be my solution. So checking your solution is very important. It saves you a lot of heartache when you get it wrong couple word problems and we're set to go. An adult lizard is about five times as long as a hatchling. If an adult lizard is 17 centimeters long, about how long is a hatchling? So important information, we're looking at an adult lizard is about five times as long as a hatchling. The adult lizard is 11 centimeters long. How long is hatchling. So things I know. I know the adult is five times as long as the hatchling. I also know that the adult is 11 centimeters. If I know two things about A, if these are both equal to A, then A is equal to each other. So 11 is five times as long as the hatchling. So I undo multiplication by dividing, and I get 2.2 equals h. So what that means is a hatchling is 2.2 centimeters long. h equals 2.2. One more. A recorded amount of precipitation is one-tenth the amount of snowfall. 
If Redfield, New York received 13 and 6 tenths inches of precipitation in one week, how many inches of snow fell? So recorded amount of precipitation is one tenth the amount of snowfall. So they received 13.6 of precipitation. So the precipitation was 13.6. How many inches of snow fell? So right now we know two things about precipitation. We know it fell this much, and we also know that the precipitation is one-tenth of snowfall. If we know two things about precipitation, we can set them equal to each other. We can undo. Notice this is a fraction. Well, then it means I'm multiplying, but I'd, so I'd have to divide by one-tenth. Hopefully remember that dividing by fractions is easy as pi. We're going to flip the second and multiply. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal because 10 over 10 times s is really just 1s. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we multiply by 10. I know that multiplying by 10 shifts me over one place, so I get 136. So that means there's 136 inches of snow. All right, that was a little bit of a um, rundown of how solving multiplication and division equation works. Just like addition and subtraction, you do the inverse operation. Make sure you work backwards and do your best. See you soon.